Alright, so we're going to have today. We've got a red light. And we've got a blinking death light. So that just usually means that's the um, something related to death. So we're about to find out right now. Knox limits exceeded this insufficient region quality, 3582 SCR conversion, blah, blah, blah. Well, let's get to diagnosing this one. This one usually points to the dozer, the death dozer, or the SCR. So let's dive into it. Okay, guys, so that 3582 code. We're at the next step already. I didn't document it. I replaced the dozer. Like troubleshooting cause if it's leaking and that sucker was leaking um, I replaced it took off the decom tube made sure there's no um, nothing in there made sure the death fluid is clean um, did all that and then there's a test you run for this bad boy this is the SCR um, there's a test you run for it so it checks the knock sensors for functionality and the SCR so, as you can see here, um, I'll post the results. But as you can see here, I already have the new one, meaning that this one, this one failed. And I was just reading yesterday, and it just seems like some guy was saying they have 22, they were 25 they replaced in their fleet. So these go bad really frequently. And like this one has the, uh, if you look right here has the ammonia sensor so um this updated one what it does is it gets rid of that ammonia sensor so, so when you buy the new this it's already updated i'll show you the holes um when i get to them but uh i get this little new harness get this new harness deleting the ammonia sensor so once i get the old one off we will i will show you Well, here's the old one. Pretty much here's what we're getting rid of. This whole thing. We're bypassing with the new harness, so that's not gonna be going onto this new one, but here. So this is just the temperature, temperature. We get rid of that other hole. And then Put the new knock sensor, the new pipe. They're pretty easy. Here we go. Okay. This is what it kind of looks like. I took that all everything off. Knock sensor. I just left, like I said, the ammonia sensor. NH3 sensor in the module. So here's a new little harness. Yeah, it has only two plugs compared to this one. Having three. One, two, three. Four, just kidding. Four. This one has three. Okay. 
So my sensor is gone. So I put the old knock sensor on here. It has like a little ripped, a ripped spot. So I taped it up, made sure there's no broken wires. So all this thing has is just the temperature sensors and the knock sensor. No more NH3 or ammonia sensor. So can't really tell anything. You can't just look inside here and be like, oh, okay, that was a problem, but you can't see much inside there anyway. And then just the outlet is just like that. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and install this. I wanna check the DPF. The truck does have 160,000 miles and it's like one of those trucks that just idles a lot and drives on streets a lot. It doesn't get a good flow in a good region. So I wanna make sure it's not plugged, but yeah, yesterday I was searching up because you have to recalibrate the ECM and I was looking up like where the TS the correct TSB and when I found a TSB. And while I was looking for a TSB, I found a guy saying that, yeah, they replaced like 25 of these. And then this, because this is usually the cause of them. You run a test like I did and it says catalyst failed. Then you do this and you delete the ammonia sensor. So um, we got to also reprogram the ECM to a completely different CPL. And I'll show you guys what that paper looks like or what TSB looks like, what it tells and how to follow the steps. And yeah, let me go check that filter out and then we'll get back to putting this back. Okay, there it is, new harness, knock sensor is zip tie a little better than it was, um, yeah, and got the main plug in, uh, got that clamp connected with the new gasket, that's about it, now it's time to go do the change the calibration I think we'll be good so in addition to the codes we had 
last time, 3582 on the NOx limits. Now we have the SCR intermediate NH3 sensor. So that means we unplugged it. So some people are telling me, ah, oh, you don't have to do the calibration. It's gonna figure out on its own when you take away the harness, which is not true. So how it works is, I'll try to show you guys here on my phone really quick, and then I'll try to put it on the screen. Just for now, I'll show you on my phone, and then, then I'll put it on the screen here. Um, it's this kind of little thing. So you find your, on the left is the uh, old ECM base code. So our, ours is DT9003. So yesterday I found DT9003, and the new one it's supposed to go to is DT90402, and the CPL is going to go to going to go to 4783 so here's what we're gonna do okay so here we have the DT 90402 and here I found it it's a DT 90402 the CPL changes to 4783 and that's what we have here 4783 the horsepower stays the same um, yeah, so I already made a work order, so all we gotta do now is transfer this to the uh, ECM. And so it's saying you're changing the ECM code and Yes, we are. And press yes. And go ahead, do your thing. Okay. Uh, just finishing it up. Um, started up, runs good, everything runs good, no misfires. Um, due to, you know, wrong, being wrong calibration or anything like that, so. Um, yeah. Show you guys again. No fault codes. The uh, def light is off. Check engine light is off. Let's go ahead and start it up one more time. Starts right up. Oil pressure good. Everything is good. It doesn't, doesn't sound rough or misfire or anything like that. Um, just refresh the code real quick one more time. Alright guys, I'm going to be signing off. This is going to be the end of the video. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this wasn't too boring. I'll try to cut down the pieces and hopefully not, not have the video too long. But yeah, that'll be it for now. Uh, on to the next mission for the day. Thanks for watching guys.